Mikey, first of all, thanks for coming on and giving us your time. Take us back, where did it all start for you? Um, I think for as a football point of view, it probably started about four or five. Um, I have an older brother who was four years older than me, and my dad used to take his boys' club team, which was Jefferson. And uh, I used to go along to all the training and, and try and kick a ball about and all that kind of thing. And I think just growing up with my dad and my brother involved in football and, um, makes you kind of like why I feel like that, I feel like you can join in. So I used to go along to train at that age. Um, and so there's always been a kind of passion in Molly football at, 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 for that point. Um, I think getting older, I then joined Aston Villa Boys Club, probably about six or seven year old. Um, and then Harps took us through there, played there for about a year, and then ended up getting, getting signed with Harps at a pro youth level, um, which, was, which was brilliant. Um, but it started pretty early on, and probably at that point, I thought you'd ups and downs that were coming, and I would have a different. Uh, standpoint on it, but um, no, that's, that's where it all kind of kicked off and, and things would have gone through there. And from your youth system, you'd obviously kind of moved about a wee bit, and it's happened to you kind of hell of a lot of guys. What, what kind of spurred you on to kind of keep going? Did you just believe in yourself? Can I get let go of the likes of kind of hearts and so on, Celtic later on? What kind of motivated you just to kind of keep going, believing in yourself? I think so. I think you, firstly, it was my dream to be a, a professional football, and, um, and until I was always in the opinion that until someone physically stopped that or that or something stopped me doing it and I would have kept working until it was no longer a reality and I was fortunate that things things went okay with, with hearts and I had five years of hearts um, and I got to under 15s and probably under 15s I, I was a little bit a late, late developer and there was a lot of lads there that were, that were growing up that were quicker and more powerful and the athletic side of my game the physical side of my game was never a real asset to be honest so coupled with other lads really developing a bit better and quicker than what I was, um, I was getting left behind a bit. And, and I needed to do extra work, um, but probably in a, in a slight bubble that things had been going well for the first four years mm -hmm. and I thought it would just continue to go in that way. And I think in, in all walks of life, as soon as you start getting a bit comfortable, you're, you, you're, or, or when you stop moving forward, you're effectively going back the way. So at that point, I, I got called into meeting the end of the season and I still thought that I did, I had done enough and, and got and get at least they, they told me that Physically, they didn't feel I was going to get to the level that it was going to require to be a professional Did you footballer. Did you see it after that? Gutted, crying my eyes out, and I don't forget that. I was, it was pretty it was hard for myself and hard for my dad as well. Me and my dad were sitting in this, in this meeting room with a couple of coaches and head of youth at Hearts, getting told that I was going to get kept on. And, and for that 10, 15 minute meeting, your, your dream is shattered and you're thinking to yourself, we'll be over here. But you've, you've got to have that kind of constant belief and, and drive that you're going to get to where you want to go. And don't get me wrong, things help, you know, within a couple of days we a couple of phone calls to other teams and Hearts would be at that point any players that were getting released they would send around the list of names to other teams and maybe if you played well against other teams you know they knew who you were kind of thing and we'd maybe invite you in for a trial and I was lucky enough to be invited in for a trial for St Johnson in, in Aberdeen um, and went on to end St for St John, eh, sorry for Aberdeen and spent a year and a bit there um, and that's when I ended up moving on to Celtic Celtic came and took us from there and, and uh, things went really well at Aberdeen but I didn't know they're not back there now, but mm -hmm. um, things went really well. Moved on to Celtic, and I gave everyone a hit um, to uh, Celtic. And, and to be honest, I'm not sure I could have done much more than, than what I did. It just wasn't enough. Um, and then they made a decision that they didn't feel it was good enough to go on and, and break into number 19. You always played centre half then. Obviously, you were younger. You said you know we were only physical enough and so on. Did you play any other positions? Or? Started off uh, as a centre midfielder, um, and uh, bizarre enough, I, when I was younger, I was probably about a bit bigger than everybody. I was. Uh, at that age I was mm -hmm. I was quite big and strong and I could kinda bulldoze my way through, you know, against maybe smaller lads mm -hmm. and over the course of time and, and puberty and everything else that comes for mm -hmm. a for a for a young man it, it reversed um, and probably been moved back from centre mid to centre half, you've got a totally different perspective in the game. Yeah, and, see the full game. Exactly, and, and I think the athleticism side of it, you know, you're constant box to box a midfielder mm -hmm. and um, that wasn't even required, as it wasn't the same kind of level of attributes that you needed to go and play centre back. And obviously, slightly different and, and challenging in other ways, but certainly not the same physical demands that they were placed on, you know, the, yeah, the, of course. The, the running that was involved in midfield. So that suited me. I could see the full game, I could kind of try and read what was happening, and, and maybe at times cover up for that lack of pace that I had when I was younger. I just try to see the game maybe a bit quicker and, and, and read situations, which, mm -hmm. which helped me and allowed me to keep developing at centre back and probably bought me time to then get get to that level and that's when I went to Harps and, and maybe they seen that there was something that they could work with there yeah. whereas as a midfielder I was never going to be good enough mm -hmm. to, to make it or have any, any kind of chance albeit at that age still very early to have someone's going to be good enough in 10 years time to play 
when growing up in the UK, I looked up to kind of pay players that you maybe tried to emulate or so on. I was obsessed with you, Phil, didn't I tell you? Right. Right. Um, I know you might be thinking, <laughs> you've not really based your game on that. <laughs> but, um, but I thought at that point, Man United used to dominate English football and what a team they had. And Ferdinand and Vidic were the centre back partnership, and I just felt as a, as a partnership between them had everything that you would want. You know, mm-hmm. Vidic was an animal, he was aggressive, he was a brilliant defender, and as was Ferdinand, but he did a bit more class about him and a yeah. bit more composure, and he was quick, and he got across to an uncovered up and he was getting the ball so I think between the two of them if you have any young centre back or defender at that point there's none better examples to, to, to watch and start the right match of the other you know all that mm. kind of stuff so um, certainly that, that was a that was you trying to kind of certain things maybe for their game and try and kind of watch them and try and emulate it in your game? I absolutely but whenever I could I would watch live games and, and match the day on a Saturday night or whatever was on and just take the lessons and see right, how do they defend against that you know and um, I think at that point, that was great for me, albeit at a totally different level. The fundamentals of the defending yeah. still remain the same, so you watch and, and try and pick up on what you can. And obviously, it's difficult, you've got to learn and make your own mistakes. And, and, and the way I have to defend like that maybe coach in certain situations is different for how yeah. some I would, you know, I would cope with it yeah. for different reasons. They might be a lot quicker or stronger than what I am, so I yeah. can come back in different ways. So, but they were great, great to watch and learn from. Same for Hamilton, what did that feel like? It was brilliant. Um, Purely because at that point I'd been released for Celtic and again I was at the point where I had to go full time. I was leaving school um, and really needed to kick on this. This was a vital part of my development and Hamilton came in offered me a, a two year contract and on £75 a week um, to, to try and make, make my way in the game. And he spoke to me and said, Look, you're, you're going to make a lot of money here and but what we do is we give them players an opportunity and to, to, to try and break in the first team and we'll get a nice James McArthur and James McCarthy have moved on. Because they brought a hell of a lot of players through them. See, if you look at them, well, they've done well. No, they've, they've been brilliant for young players and I think as a young player you, you've got to have a clear route to a first team and um, that's what you've got to be working towards and at times maybe the bigger clubs it's difficult to do that but certainly a club of Hamilton there is that clear pathway to, to a first team so I got that opportunity and I was absolutely delighted and, and that's really been the hard work. I think been at that lower club as well, it kind of got you you were able to kind of learn a wee bit more, but then again, when you look at you made your debut at 16 away at Angels, what did that must have been like? You were, you were through right in the deep end, were you? Aye, uh, it was, that was a bit surreal, to be fair. Um, I'd been doing, after the first six months, he'd, he'd been there, I, I'd done okay, I'd done up training the first time a couple of times, and um, realised that, that was a big step for under 19 football, and, and, and the build up to that Angels game, I'd been up training kind of every day, and had been doing well, and ran a couple of squads with the first team. But again, as any, any young player will tell you, that element of luck and, and the build up to that game, I think two of the centre backs that we normally played either get injured or one get sent off a week before. And instead of having four first team centre backs, they only two. Mm-hmm. And that was, the, that was the fifth choice, if you like, at that point pushing. So um, the, the manager at the time, Bill Reed, spoke to me and said, I want to play back three in, in, in Saturday, you're saying you're going to be playing, so get yourself ready. So How did you mentally get like, in this little bit? Like, you can't go to sleep for wow. three nights, I can be oh, sleeping for <laughs> Jesus. Um, but it, it, was, it was unbelievable and, and again, I, I, the way I looked at it was that I wanted to work towards up until the four or five year old to, to being 16 now. It was a relief for it, was that right? I kinda, obviously with the defeat it didn't help, you were in the deep end, especially at Ibrox and that, I can imagine that's intense in there. Was that a bit of a buzz killer or were you still just buzzing that you made your debut and that was still, it? I was still buzzing and I think when you're as a young player when you first play there's an element of you that just wants you to be alright mm-hmm. and then go into the game and albeit the team might lose and in that the occasion we lost heavily, we lost 4-0 but I mean just when I right good side of that team that was when they were running on the league at you. Yeah. Um, so I was, I felt I had we went in and, and survived. I'd say I certainly didn't excel and I certainly wasn't in the man of match game like that. I said yeah I guess I gave away a penalty but um, I went in and, and felt that even mentally just coped to the cope to the scenario that I was put you know put in front of and I wouldn't be able to confidence as well, really and while I can keep up. I absolutely guys. I think you have got these guys are playing first team on a, on a better pedestal almost where do you think I'm oh, going to be for that? Yeah. I think that, that was what Hamilton done signing for Hamilton gave an opportunity to train alongside first team players and realise right okay, they are maybe ahead at the moment, they may be physical attributes, they're they're big, they're men, they're stronger and, um, and what have you, but I think you realise that ability wise you can if you keep working hard, you'll get a chance to, to sell and be on power. To get there, and then obviously in 2016 you became the captain of Hamilton. What did that feel like, taking the armband on? 
that was special, um, and it was probably something at that age I didn't expect when I was 22, um, when, when Martin Cannon was a guy for the time. I can imagine you were going to be youngest there as well. You I was, I was, I was certainly a lot younger, it's all, a lot older than the, than the team at the time, and certainly the starting level, I mean, the guys that would have been playing week in, week out. Um, fortunately, by that point, I kind of established myself and I was playing every game. Um, and the manager put me in through pre season and said, I'm going to meet your captain. And the one thing he asked me to do was, we've not changed who I was, and he said, That's why I'm meeting you. I'm not, I'm not expecting you to come in and scream and shout and do the stereotypical captain thing yeah. when you've got to bark orders and all that. He said, I'm, I'm making you the captain for the example you say and how you carry yourself and you know, just go and lead by example. And I tried to do that, try to stay true to what I believe is the right things to do. And just because you've got an armband doesn't give you a right to go around, you know, being a bit of a you know. So, yeah. um, so that's what I tried to do was, was, was maintain what got me to these points and, and stick by the principles that put me in a good position at that point. And, and um, for me it was, it was something special. Brilliant. Lanark's a dead piece. I'm a moral man, I've been <laughs> a few of them. So what would they like to play? And I've obviously been a few of the games, I watched the atmosphere. It's quite intense at Fir Park and when you were at home and so on, what do they like to play in? Brilliant, really good actually. Um, the, the surreal You're thing was... You're a Motherwell man well, as well. Growing up in Motherwell, um, I had a lot of, a lot of pals that went to the Motherwell games and uh, one of my best friends right, it's Mayley, him and his dad are yeah, massive. Yeah, used to well, that's that, you know, any time yeah. I'd seen them, I'd see them, they'd be, I'd be getting abuse off them in, in that corner of the, the, kind of the Motherwell boys, I think, yeah. they, um, they call themselves. That, that was pretty good, there was always a few familiar faces in there. And in my first few um, experiences of that, we, we actually won, we won, I think we beat Motherwell in penalties, then we beat the 4-0 or 5-0 in the next couple of games. So, it, it was brilliant, but I, I tasted the other side, which is where we lost a, a headway a couple of times as well. So, and that's horrible. There, there's a feeling of embarrassment there that in such an important game for the club, you want to be doing. And um, you hear other, other people playing, they'll be saying the exact same thing. I think when you experience that and you've played in it, you understand exactly how that feels. So, um, it's, it's, a, it's an exciting build up to a game, but it's certainly a, it's a, a hell of a come down if you, oh, if you want to come up. Highlights of Hamilton, any highlights that can stick out for you, times that you enjoyed there? The first time we played Celtic, um, we got promoted back into the Premier League and the first season under Alec Neal, we were top of the league for the first two or three months of the season and that turned 21 in October and we played Celtic at Parkhead, first, first game the same weekend as I said, that turned 21 and we beat them 1-0 um, to the main top of the league, Celtic one day we went back top and us, we had the Ackies, we had about 50 fans in the program, mm -hmm. turned up and beat them 1-0 and I think at that point Given where I came from in Celtic, saying I wasn't good enough and moving me on, and to then go back there and, and play, against, uh, play against Celtic and beat them was, was, was really, really important. And then obviously signing for uh, sorry, Aberdeen, did you know it was going to come or was it kind of spot in the moment? You'd obviously got yourself injured and so on, you just got a really bad injury. Did you know that it was going to happen or did, was it? Well, I think that there was a chance that it maybe could have happened a wee bit earlier than um, just before I got the injury, there was, there was when we talk, but um, again, it's it's all kind of just small conversations, you don't really know what if anyone's ever really going to take mm -hmm. off. And uh, I think that when I got the injury, I thought that was again, that was it, that the opportunity to go there going. But um, Derek McInnes, the guy for now, was, was brilliant and stayed in touch throughout that couple of months and just you know, asked how the progress was coming along and coming to Aggie the time. They got in touch and said, six months left, we'll be able to take us up to Aberdeen and finish off my rehab and, and get us there, which is. For somebody to show you that kind of a faith in you and course. confidence that they can get you back to being a, you know, what they believe was a good player, and that was massive for them. I must have given you some confidence there, eh? because you don't really hear about a lot of players getting no, saying well injured. That's the thing, that's, I, I wasn't really sure where I went to there, because at the same time I'd done my ACL and I left the same knee. Um, what's the perception then of that? A player that's, that's maybe, is there a weakness there, and all these kind of things. That's what I was hearing off other people, was, you know, people may not touch me and this kind of thing, you know, so having a knowledge to work towards over that, that four or five years. Been 16 to 21, established myself in the first team and then waiting an opportunity to maybe move on to a, mm -hmm. a bigger club. Um, was that now in jeopardy? Uh, it nobody really happened, and I was, I was good to do with that. But whenever I got that, I got confidence for the gaffer that that helped with the rehab. Even at Hamilton, I knew what I was working towards. I was wanting to make sure I got back fit and do the rehab properly, and then need a, need a stage to go and oh, hopefully go and sign for Aberdeen. How do you deal with injuries? You've obviously two serious injuries now, you've had some operations on it as well, haven't you? Nah, four, 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 so, four, four, so four, four, how, how do you deal with that? You know what I mean? They're like, you're down, you've just signed for Aberdeen, obviously you've got the buzz, but you want to go out and get training, hit the ground running, I can imagine you'd be that desperate to go out with the team. How do you mentally stay strong, just stay focused on your rehab? And it's, it's tough. Um, I, I used a, a sports psychologist a couple of times as well, just to make sure that things were, were kept in, in, the right, in the right way. And mentally, I think that's, you have good days and bad days. I think you've got to be accepting of that as well. I think 
incredible naive to to go along thinking that I was going to hunky the way through your rehab and there were days that things weren't going well, maybe there days you wake up being a bit sore and you, you worry about things but I think you've got to see a target's on the way and see the end goal and, and probably signed for Aberdeen things were starting to get tough for the rehab in terms of that four or five months into it you know, you know you've still got a few months to go, you've been doing the same stuff in the gym, mm-hmm. it's becoming monotonous, it's becoming mind numbing and a bit boring, but it's it's need, really needed work and, and valuable work that you need in your in your joint. So um I think that gave me that wee bit of um, motivation to just kick on again and, and another platform. And once I was up there working with the boys up in Aberdeen and out in the pitch and doing wee bits and bobs, you see some top players here and I want to be in amongst that, I want to get back fit and um, and keep yourself going. So there was, there was a lot of things, you know, my family were important for keeping my spirits high, the boys at Hamilton were brilliant when I was in there, the changing room, getting that move, and then the gaff for confidence from yeah. Aberdeen's perspective was everything that I needed to, to keep working to get back to where I wanted to be. Touch a wee bit there on kind of sports psychology and so on, you see it massive now, it's becoming a big, big part of the game, and you can hear obviously a lot of kind of boxers are using it now, they're helping to kind of get their mindset, what did you think, do you think it made a difference for you? Definitely, I think at the point, I probably should have engaged with it a bit earlier than I did. I think I, I waited until I was, there was a couple of down, uh, real down days, I feel like, um, mm-hmm. before I reached out. And at that point, then, instead of being in control of the situation, you're effectively trying to cover a situation where maybe your head, your head space isn't at the point it needs to be to help you, certainly to make sure you keep progressing. So um, I think it's massive. I thought there's a reason that professional golfers, boxers, as you say, Jordan, um, Tennis players, these guys are top top athletes, you know, amongst the elite in the world. I've got a psychologist as part of the He's saying now, that's what he's doing. Like, I mean, exactly, so you can't, there's no, there's no way that there's no place for it and that it's no needed um, in professional sport. So I think if, even if you get the smallest gain out of it, um, in whatever capacity, if you get that advantage, get into a, um, a, a, then your, your match day, if you like, whether it be golf, football, swimming, whatever it may be. Um, Strong mindset and so on, there's a lot of pressure on you when you're going to run to the park. The fans, do you know what I mean? The manager, the pressure, everything coming on you. If you're probably on the right mindset, I don't think you could, you could really do it there, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's difficult. Um, and, and as you say, different circumstances, even for myself, going for Hamilton, where you were, you were fighting off that threat of relegation every week, and that it was almost a fear of failure, and, and losing meant that the club would maybe get relegated. And for a club at Hamilton, us getting relegated meant players. Yeah, the goals, maybe staff around the stadium, maybe nobody went down the budget. Does that change slightly? Do they start to let people go? So there's, there's impacts here, impacts on, on how we finish, and, and that you've got to deal with that. You've got to be able to go out and effectively take away all the outside contributing factors to what all the results gives you. Yeah, you've got to be able to go out and effectively take away all the outside contributing factors to what already gives you a high pressure situation and just go and play your game, which is you against your opponent. Yeah. So if you can use all the big tools, whether it be push your get ups and downs of the game itself, if a player's starting to get ready, how do you combat that? Do you start going to pieces or do you, do you, do you know what I mean? So, um, no, it's, it's, it's massive in football. Um, and yeah, I would say there's top athletes in the world use it for a reason. Glad we touched on that there. Then you've finally done all your rehab work, you're going to make your debut against Barnsley. What was that like? It was unbelievable. Um, just to get that, get that wee bit of experience in, in the Europa League, you know. Right, you've been in the game. I know, I was going to say that, wasn't it? Um, I remember speaking to a couple of mates and I'm like, ah, it's, not, it's not exactly, but we're hoping for an easier start than that, you know, and I just, I'm like, well, there's no better start, as far uh-huh. as I'm concerned, you know, they'd, they'd finished um, sixth, or, sixth or seventh, I think, in, in the Premier League that year, um, really, really, they'd, they'd be brilliant, top, top players, they'd, the guys can calls up to England and all the rest of it, um, alongside they played a competitive game in over 13 months at that point, so, it was really exciting, but again, I remember the other one that the reason I wanted to go to a club like Aberdeen and sign there was to get that opportunity to, to go and thrive and it was unbelievable. Um, the, the atmosphere, both at Pataudry and then down at Tough Moor, when we played them, both games on live and telly, it was unbelievable. So um, we pushed them all the way, didn't quite make it, but uh, won each in both games and then took it in the extra time. Um, was what did you notice with the difference in them? Was there a difference? Did you notice they were maybe a wee bit physically better with the better footballers? What were they kind of technically a bit better? I think, um, I think physically, Probably they were all they were all in brilliant condition. I think Te- technically there was, there was good there was good players there. There was guys that were at, you know maybe a different level for a couple of um, a couple of players that used to play against up here. But I think physically just after I remember one of the stories. Um, Scott McKenna was 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 marking James Tarkovsky who's from England at Arsenal now, and uh, a corner and that went well, just any extra time and Scotty went up and, and says to him, you know you know knack a big man in the corner, I'm a bit of a badder. 
and uh, and Tarko also grabbed his grabbed his belly and made a few, maybe a few loads a wee bit. I'm fat, I'm fat, fat as anything and all that. But I'm ripped and all that kind of thing. Scotty was just kind of like that. But, but like, well, like, these guys are they're, they're, they're in such pain condition. Do they pass you on your mark? I want to take him. Do you want to take him? I don't know. You can keep him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so just you know, they, they're, they're playing at such top level, um, they're such a top level. These guys are they're, they're in brilliant condition. But that was a real learning curve for us in terms of when you get that wee bit of exposure to that level. Then it wets the appetite you can only continue to try and do yeah. but kick on again, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then obviously, let's get talking about Scotland, Colin. How are you feeling at the end? Brilliant. I'm really excited, obviously, in the, in the next few days we'll, we'll join up with the, the squad again, um, which was uh, an incredible, an incredible taste to get to just when I found out I was in the squad. Um, fortunately, I've been called up a couple of times last season as well, um, which is brilliant. It came much sooner than, than I expected. I just wanted to try and play with him to where I've been in. Um, and consolidate my place there and, and within a couple of months I'd been called up to, to a couple of squads so um, a real, a real dream and, uh, and a childhood ambition of mine was, was to have an opportunity to play with Scotland was never sure if, if he would be good enough to, to achieve yeah. that but um, once you get there it's, it's incredible And Steve Clark he's obviously called up quite a young squad so he's obviously taking a lot of confidence in these young guys and so on um, what do you think of him as a manager and he played against him or anything like that? I hope he also took the, took the Kilmarnock team um, that, that we've played against in the last kind of 12, 18 months and um, the difference he's made there has been unbelievable. He took a team that I bought the league and I think he only had three or four points after 10 games or something like that and they finished, they picked us to, to third place this year. Um, so the, the job he's done there and, and it's not in question and I think um, the way he carries himself, the way he speaks, I'm about him is you know, first class and um, I think if, if he can do um, a similar job, you know, they did a commander and they're anywhere close to that Scotland, but the, the, the national team will be a fantastic manager. Yeah. What was the feeling like when you first got your call up and you were in that dressing room and you were kind of looking about yourself? That must have been some buzz. It was a bit surreal. I, was, I joined up late the first time um, and I was in, you know, as guys are like us, you know, you're the Harmon Beggars and, you know, top four Steve Naismiths and guys go down south, um, Stephen Fletcher, you know. It just, it was unbelievable that you're in, you know, and, and, and kind of being there, but you don't have time really to be thinking of yourself, you know, these are the guys that are playing at top level because ultimately you're now there alongside them, so you've got to go over that initial spike here, which is unbelievable, but mm-hmm. I'm now there to take part in and exactly be part of the squad, so um, it was just a massive honour and as, um, a bit of a shock but when it first happened, but um, you've got to try and take it in your stride and go on it. Mm-hmm. Moving on, who's the best player you've played with and against? Played with um, Alec Neal, I think, was was one of the best players I've played with. Um, just in t- all round, I think he was a good football player. Um, but he had every aspect of his game. Maybe he was, a, he was a leader, he influenced other people. I've never played with anybody that influences mm-hmm. others the way he did. He, could, he literally controlled, he was, he was a puppet master, just the way he affected everybody in, in his team around about him. Um, and certainly that, that old school type, you talk about older characters like Vera and Keane. That kind of captain, Alan Neal, certainly, yeah. and then we'll do that as well. So, Alec would be right up there. Playing against, um, do you mind if Ove was up there? Actually, not only have I played against him this year, but I played against him four or five years ago in Sunderland and a, and a friendly, and albeit not a competitive game, his movement, pace, sharpness was, was incredible, and his ability to score was, was second to none. So, I think the, the intelligence that, that he showed when I was playing against him, I realised this is a, you know, a kind of stereotypical kind of Scottish player that you're playing against. That, as well, muscle and muscle, and there's a lot more. That's what you say, he's game compared to what you. The challenges are the way you think, John, again, challenges the way you approach situations and makes you constantly think it's dangerous in areas you don't want to be in, but still get that explosion to go in behind you and, and penetrate you. So, um, uh, that, was, that was a brilliant experience, and he's certainly right on there. What are you doing with your gym work now? Obviously, you've kind of stepped up, it's a different level, like you were saying. Are you doing kind of different gym work now compared to what you used to? I think you just, uh, the higher up the level you go, you realise how important that the physical side of the game is and um, I think probably certainly more active in the gym and do, do more, mm-hmm. more gym sessions. But I was lucky if it came around and saying to yourselves that I've got my eye open to that, that yeah, this is something that you need to commit to as much as the football side of things. So um, I think that the, the way football's going, it's certainly more physically demanding mm-hmm. and um, you know, that kind of old school way of thinking of, you know, during pre season, you can go or the off season, you can go away and you know, go to Ibiza and go and do these yeah. things for, for a few weeks and enjoy yourself. It's, you need to keep yourself ticking over now and, and even now with these internationals in the summer, it's the physical side of it and the gym works so important. Best manager you've worked under, let's get a hard one for you, if you can put me in the, 
Um, difficult, it's difficult to answer. I think that the success that, that we enjoyed as a team and an individual under Alan Yeo was was unbelievable and it, it, had a, it had a massive influence in my career and, and changed the way I, I kind of looked at things. But um, I think then moving on to, to work under Dino McInnes has, has, been, has been special as well. And I think the faith that he showed in me when I was at the time when he signed us, um, he's a winner, the gaffer, and, and it's nothing, whether it's in training, a possession drill, if it was one the game, or moving on to a Saturday, um, it's all about winning. Because I've said so. It rubs off on you, and, and that's why it's, it's, it's delighted that you're in Europe, finishing both, no, you know, no good enough for Aberdeen. And, um, we'll finish second the last four years in a row, uh, and, and even slumped to third was disappointing in Rangers, but then to miss out on the last day and third as well and finish fourth was, was poor, but uh, working under the winners uh, is brilliant as well. Best stadium you've played in, or your favourite stadium you've played in? Um, I didn't actually, well, Hamden special, I, I, I loved Hamden, I think, growing up uh, as a kid, Hamden's uh, the stadium. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly, Scotland played there, Scottish Cup finals, I played the League Cup finals, you know, that has got that feel to it, so I think, I got the opportunity to play in the same final against Rangers in the, in the League Cup when we won 1 0, and it was packed. Rangers had you know, the majority of the stands there, and that would have been 2000s as well. It was, it was unbelievable, so um, that was certainly the right of them. Where do you see yourself in five years? That's a hard question. Um, <sighs> she's one's on fit and healthy, Jordan, and I'm playing. I, I, I would like you to have got ambitions that, you know, maybe one day I always wanted to try and try my hand in England if I was good enough to go back to England at some point, but. Um, I love I love being at Aberdeen. Um, it's a brilliant club and a brilliant city. Um, and if, if I'm fit and healthy and continue to play week in week out there, I'll be, I'll be happy with it. What advice do you give to any young players? Work hard. Work hard and stay grounded. Um, I think well, throughout my time at Youth Academy, I thought I was doing enough. Um, I thought the training two or three times a week and then you're giving the Saturday was enough, but it's not enough because you've got 20 elite boys at that age in your own team plus. 10 other teams that have all got the same and they're all doing that and there's only going to be a small percentage that are actually going to kick on and, yeah. and, and make it so you've got to do more than that and you've just I always kind of had the opinion that you might not be good enough at some point in your career but see if you control what I can which is fitness, strength, you know, diet, yeah. whatever it may be else make that as good as it can be but I'm up there if I fall by the wayside and I'm not at the level I'd like to be I've done it when I could um, and I gave up on that throughout that time so that's not a bad way to do a little back. I love that, and especially just when you say that, you when you see me coming in here in training, you run down and you do, you give 100%, and you are obviously the success of working hard. So, listen, thank you very much for coming on and giving us your time, and we wish you all the very best. Thanks, mate.